According to McKinsey, a quarter of women are thinking of scaling back their careers or leaving the workforce because of extra demands created by the pandemic. And when you turn the spotlight on medical research, this shows up in a decline in research papers with female authors. So to discuss the ramifications of this, I want to welcome Dr. Nancy Spector. She's a professor at Drexel University College of Medicine. Dr. Spector, set the scene for us because men historically outnumber women in medical research. So there's long been a gender gap. But how much bigger is that gap now versus before the pandemic? So thank you for the question. That's a, 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 an amazing question. So um, it took to set context, um, ideally, our medical workforce should mirror our patient population in the United States. And our leadership should mirror the, the uh, patient population in the United States. And we are far away from that. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, right now, 18% um, of the deans of medical colleges in the United States are women. The number of women with um, other diverse backgrounds with intersectionality are right. even smaller. And we have, we were just making really great strides before the pandemic, and now we are all of a sudden sliding backwards. So already we have seen an effect since March and April of the number of women who are publishing papers. Mm -hmm. um, author papers in particular are, are decreasing. And why that's so important is not only is it that we need to have researchers working in diverse groups, but we also, if we cannot advance in leadership as women, right. unless we publish. Now, medical research is just like academia in that your prospects are just tied per to how prolific an author you really are, especially if you're early on in your career. What is the difference between, say, being the first authorship position or the last authorship position on any given research? Why does that matter? Oh, that's a great question. So the first, uh, first authorship is usually the person who's really um, more junior leading the charge of the academic thrust of the research. The senior person is somebody who is more advanced in their career, like an associate or full professor, who is well-established, who's sort of guiding the way. So ideally, both positions, first and last, are really important for academia, but for younger women, it's first. Dr. Spector, how are institutions responding to this reality of female academics who have families that they need to take care of and therefore cannot devote as much time to, to authoring these papers? So it's a little bit slow. Uh, people are starting to pay attention to it. Uh, there are a couple things that people are doing. We need to, we need to evolve our policies and pr procedures to support younger women. Um, some institutions are extending what's called the tenure clock which means the amount of time we, we are um, asked to spend in a certain rank to advance. So mm -hmm. extending that. Um, I think what we need to do, though, is um, expand how we support um, child care and other caretaking roles. Mm. Women tend to do a lot of the yeah, and that's something that, that's a bigger issue than, than just in uh, the medical research field. One thing I did notice is there is a lag effect because research papers can take years to produce. Mm -hmm. So the gap may actually be more pronounced now than we realize, than the numbers show us. What does this mean for the rel relevance of and utility of research that's currently being conducted on, say, COVID-19? Well, I worry if... Um if we're not representing all of the patients out there. So women and underrepresented in medicine, like we, if we're the patient population, we should be represented by the scientists who are doing the work. Mm -hmm. uh, the work will be more robust, more forward thinking, more well-rounded. Um, so I worry about that. In the long term, I do worry about this extended gap in um, disparities across women, uh, women and men and underrepresented in medicine mm -hmm. in leadership and advancement of our science. Do you think there will be some things that will get better? For instance, there will be fewer actual physical conferences that people have to attend and there will be more virtual conferences that will suit women better? Well, that's a great question, but I, I have a, I have a, women under invest in social capital to begin with, meaning we don't spend as much time networking 
to advance our, our own professional advancement. I worry if we go more and more to online that will that gap will also continue mm. to build. So I think yes, there are advantages to online, but we still need that in-person connection to, yeah. to make relationships and to build social capital to move forward.